Hey y'all, Mr. Williams coming to you for a second week of at-home instruction uh, because of the corona or the COVID-19 virus. Hope y'all are doing good. Hope you got all your necessities like toilet paper and hamburgers and hot dogs and anything else that you might need. So I'm coming to you today from my garden. You can see my little puppy back there, Miss Ella May. She's helping me with the weeds. You can also see Luther. He's hanging out on the tomato cages. He's help them protect the garden from them crows. Who needs a scarecrow when you got Luther, right? So, um, like I said, I'm coming to you from a garden. Um, and, and speaking of planning and, and, and growing things, this week we're gonna talk about the Dust Bowl. Um, and some of you may be familiar with it. Um, but if not, um, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So, we've kind of finished up the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s, um, and, and we talked a little bit about the Great Depression um, and the things that led up to the Great Depression. Um, 1920s was a great time for most people, uh, with the exception of maybe some farmers. But the farmers um, really tried to fix their issues by planting more crops. And, and as you know about supply and demand, that's actually going to make it worse because they're going to uh, produce more and no one's going to be there to buy it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, about the Dust Bowl. So the Dust Bowl um, encompasses kind of the 1930s, that area. Um, and really the epicenter is gonna be your, your Texas and your Oklahoma panhandles, a little bit into Kansas and, and Colorado, New Mexico, those areas as well. Of course, before people settled there, it was just wide, wide open prairie. Um, and you had this buffalo grass, which is basically your prairie grass. Uh, the thing that's unique about the buffalo grass is that it, it has roots that are, they go like five feet into the ground. So West Texas and Western Oklahoma and places like that don't get a lot of rain, but this grass was able to do really well because its roots went so far down, it was able to sustain itself. Well, along about the early 1900s, of course, Oklahoma became a state in 1907, um, but 1907 up until about 1920 or so, a lot of people started flooding in into Oklahoma and especially uh, during the 1920s. And they were lured there by the promise that, hey, maybe we can, um, you know, make a, a success for ourselves by, by growing wheat. Um, wheat's very popular um, during the 1920s. Um, they're kind of led there on, on some false pretenses, though. Um, a lot of people um, advertise that, you know, this is like the land of Canaan. This is just this really, really great land um, when really it's not. I mean, you're going to have periods of drought and it may look good. Um, but again, that's because that buffalo grass has, has suited really well to the environment. It, it's adapted. Um, cheap land is going to bring them there as well. Um, and so they're really going to rush out and, and they're going to plow up this prairie. And that's going to lead... Um, to a lot of problems um, and they're plowing at an extremely fast rate because this new little invention of, of the tractor is becoming more affordable and everybody is, is buying tractors and these new um, plows and, and they're able to turn up more soil um, than they could have before with you know maybe a horse and a plow or something like that uh, during the 1920s a lot of people are going to buy um, merchandise and, and farming equipment automobiles things like that on credit um, and, and credit, again, that's just where, where you don't have the money for it right now, but you can make payments on it. Well, if you don't make the payments, you're going to lose that. Um, and, and that's going to kind of lead into the Great Depression as well. When that stock market crashes, October 29th, 1929, and, and that's kind of when we identify the start of the Great Depression, even though it, it was kind of around, a, you know, a few years before for farmers. Um, but that's kind of when we label the start. And we really label the start the following year in 1930 when the banks um, start collapsing. Basically, um, you know, you put your money in a bank and today your, your money's safe because um, it's backed by, by different government programs and stuff. But back then, if, if, you know, if the bank shut down and your money was in there, you may have a hard time getting your money back. And so a lot of people are going to lose their money, um, but they're going to lose the ability to pay back all of these things that they bought um, on credit, like their tractors and stuff like that. Um, but again, that's a little more into the, into the Great Depression. Let's talk a little bit um, more about about the Dust Bowl. So not only are we in a Great Depression at this point, but um, we're going to enter a period of drought. Um, and so the, these crops, these wheat fields that everybody has planted in the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle, uh, they're, they're drying up, they're not growing. Um, they really don't have a good way to water them at this point. Um, and so it's basically creating um, desert-like conditions. And, and that's going to lead into what, like I said, we call the Dust Bowl because you're gonna have these great big dust storms that are gonna blow up. Um, and, and, and cover the territory. Um, people are, are going to wake up um, in the morning and, and they're gonna have dust on them. And the only clean place um, you know, in, in their beds is, is where they were laying. That's how much dust is falling 
um, falling from, from some of these storms. And, and here in a minute, we'll look at some pictures of some dust storms to give you a little bit um, better idea uh, of what exactly they were. Um, people couldn't get into their houses because there was so much dust. Think of, think of it like basically a blizzard. Think about you know snow piling up against your, your door and, and you can't open your door, you can't get out or get in. Um, think about that, but think about it instead of snow, it's dust and it's dirt. Um, so, so as you can imagine, just seeing these, these great big, they call them black blizzards blowing in. Um, um, scary situation. Um, and it causes a lot of problems for people. So not only are they in a depression, um, but now they can't grow crops. They can't make money. So they're going to lose everything that they have. They're gonna lose their homes. They're gonna lose their tractors and stuff like that. Things that they had bought on credit. Um, if they're lucky and they own their land, that might help them a little bit. But if the land's not producing, um, there's really not a lot keeping you there. Um, 1934, um, dust actually reaches the east coast of the United States. So it's starting like, you know, the Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado area, and, and it reaches all the way to the east coast. In fact, the White House, um, the president gets dust off of his desk. And I think he's quoted for saying something like, oh, here's a little bit of Oklahoma uh, on my desk. Um, not only does it reach the east coast, but it actually um, ships 300 miles out from the coast, report seeing dust on, on their ships as well. So just again, imagine middle of the country, Oklahoma, Texas, and these dust storms are so massive and so big that they put dust not only on the east coast of the United States, but 300 miles farther out uh, into the Atlantic Ocean. April 14th, 1935, that's the biggest dust storm um, on record that we know of, in, and that's in America, and that's Black Sunday is what we call that. Um, it moves about 65 miles per hour in places it's 200 miles wide. So huge dust storm um, just bombarding the people on the plains. Another thing about these dust storms is they contain a lot of static electricity and that's kind of what makes them grow and get bigger. You know, you got this in between the dirt and the ground, the static electricity is building and as it's doing that, it's lifting more dirt up, uh, lifting it up into these massive storms. Um, I read somewhere that um, there was so much static electricity in this storm here on the Black Sunday, April 4th, 1935, that it could have, um, it could have provided enough electricity for the entire um, city of New York City. It's so huge. Um, and in places, the storm is 10,000 feet high. So how did these storms affect people? I mean, the obvious reason, um, they're, they're losing their livelihood. You know, they can't, they can't grow things. They, they can't make a living. These, these guys are farmers. Um, so, so what are they gonna do? Um, some other um, tolls that it's gonna take on people um, is their livestock's gonna die. Um, sometimes uh, cattle would die and they would cut them open and their stomachs would be full of dirt. That's how much, um, how much dirt was in, was in these storms and, and, and how badly they affected the people. Um, if you're caught outside in one of these dust storms, you're gonna have massive blisters where the where the um, sand is just beating against you, the dirt's beating against you. Um, also, um, mostly children, but some adults, mostly children start developing what's called this dust pneumonia. And basically, they're, they're breathing in these really tiny particles of dirt and dust. Uh, I mean, think about the size of a period, that's how little they are. So they're breathing these in and, and this dirt is coming into their lungs and, and basically they're coughing up mud. Can you imagine that? Um, but it leads to dust pneumonia, and a lot of people die from it, um, especially a lot of the younger children that are affected with it. Um, when people are, are caught in storms, they could last for days. So basically, just think you're out on a pretty day, and, and you just see, like maybe in the sky behind me, you see this big old giant cloud of dirt, you know, as high as you can see coming at you, and it's going to maybe land on you, and it's going to stay there for, for several days, and so it's going to be total darkness, minus the stars and the moon, of course. Um, you know, in the old days, when people had, had to deal with snow and blizzards, like on their, their, their uh, uh, plantations or their uh, farms and stuff, they would uh, tie a rope from their home to their barn. So when these blizzards would come through, they could follow that rope to go out and feed the cattle and, you know, do things like that. They're going to have to do the same thing during these dust storms because it's so dark that they can't see the barn. They don't know where, where they're going. So they're going to tie ropes from their homes um, to their barns just so they can get to and from these places they're gonna maybe wear bandanas on their faces wet wet it down a little bit um, to try and limit the amount of dirt um, that they're breathing in so again massive massive um, situation in the, in the United States again Texas Oklahoma Colorado Kansas New Mexico um, kind of that's the epicenter um, and then um, kind of the long one of the effects of this is is that a lot of people are gonna lose everything they have and they're going to move to California. You're gonna have people going to California in massive, massive numbers um, by the mid 1930s. Because they think that, you know, California is gonna have, you know, uh, lots of work for them. It's gonna be a nice green land. Maybe they can uh, work on fruit orchids and, you know, oranges and, and things like that. And so they have this false pretense that California is gonna be this great place. Unfortunately, when a lot of them get there, um, they find that, you know, life's not much better for them. They still have a hard time finding work because the United States 
is in the Great Depression, and the Great Depression affects all of the United States, affects most of the world. Uh, so it, it's especially hard for the Dust Bowl area because you've got a drought, you've got the Dust Bowl, and you've got the Great Depression. Uh, but again, tons and tons of people are going, going to migrate to, um, to Oklahoma, or not to Oklahoma, to California, in hopes of a better, better life. But when they get there, for a lot of them, it's not so great, not at first. They're gonna live in um, tent cities, um, not gonna have a lot of food. Um, healthcare is obviously not gonna be great either. Um, but yeah, so let's take a little, little bit of a look um, at some pictures from the Dust Bowl, uh, just to give you a little clear idea, and then we'll do a quick recap of the lesson, um, and then I'll give you your assignment for the week. So here's a few pictures uh, to kind of give you an idea of you know, what we're talking about and, and the magnitude, the size of these uh, massive uh, dust storms um, that affected, again, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, parts of Colorado and Kansas. Um, so you can see it in the background as it's approaching. It's like this little town. You can see the people uh, standing out there watching it. Um, and again, just remember when, the, when these storms come, they don't just necessarily just blow through really quick. They, they can linger on. Um, for, for several days in some cases. Um, and again, just creating this, this blackness, um, just like night minus the stars and the moon. Here's another one. This one says it's approaching Spearman, Texas, April 14th, 1935. Um, again, April 14th, 1935, that's the, the Black Sunday storm. Again, you can just see the size of it um, as it approaches uh, from ground to to sky. And again, remember there's a lot of static electricity in these storms as well. There's another one. This one was from 1937. It's fixing to engulf this entire town uh, right here. And that's in um, Booker, which is uh, Texas County, Oklahoma. And this is kind of the aftermath of a dust storm. You can see how like a lot of the farm equipment's buried and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it looks like a wasteland. It looks like that used to be a garden maybe, or um, it looks like maybe corn. Um, it could have been a field, probably a garden, um, being that close to the house like it is. Uh, but you can just see what it does to it. It looks like the Sahara Desert, basically. And then this is a, a picture of, uh, you know, we talked about how um, a lot of the people from Oklahoma um, started migrating to California thinking that it was going to be so much better for them there. And so what they would do is they would take their automobiles like you see here um, and basically make them into like a portable covered wagon type thing. They would just throw everything that they could on there and see their mattresses, there's table on there and everything they could. And, and some families were large, so people would um, definitely be crammed. They would probably sit on top of that stuff. And um, again, it was like little makeshift modern day covered wagons is kind of what it um, reminds me of um, on the road to, to California. People in California called these people Okies, um, and it was kind of degrading to them um, to call them Okies. It basically just meant that they were poor and didn't have anything, and, and the Californians didn't really want to associate with them. They didn't want them in their state. Um, and at one time, they tried to pass laws um, saying that people from Oklahoma could not come to California because they were being overrun with them, and California itself was facing uh, the Great Depression, so they didn't want this to add to it. And this is a map that shows you the areas that we're talking about there in red, that's like the epicenter of the Dust Bowl. And again, it's that Texas, Oklahoma panhandle, bits of Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico. But it, it stretches out. Um, you know, you can see the areas that are damaged with it. Um, so it stretches out pretty much across the entire central part of, of the United States. And here's a chart that shows you the number of dust storms per year in the 1930s. And we refer to the 1930s um, as the Dirty 30s just because of the dust storms and how much dirt was involved and whatnot. But um, anyways, you can see uh, quite a few dust storms there. 1937 had 72 reported dust storms. So let's recap the dirty 30s. Uh, so cheap land, false advertisement brings a lot of people into Oklahoma um, and to the Great Plains, which kind of sets them up for failure. Um, they, they're not the best they don't practice the best farming practices. They are tilling up everything. They don't really do crop rotation, which is where maybe one year you plant wheat, the next year you plant corn, and that puts nutrients back in the ground to keep the dirt from ruining. So they didn't practice very good farming practices. And then you get a drought on top of that. And so you've got all this tilled up dry land uh, that just makes for an ideal situation for, for what we now call the Dust Bowl. 300,000 square miles of land are gonna be affected. 75% of the country is affected. 480 tons of topsoil per acre are removed throughout these various dust storms. 
In addition to the dust storms, farmers are affected by plagues like grasshoppers and stuff like that. So even if they are able to grow something, the grasshoppers uh, oftentimes would, would come through and, and ruin what they had left. In some areas, gardens are destroyed by rabbits. The farmers had uh, killed off a lot of the coyotes. And so what that did is it created ideal situation for the rabbits to multiply. And so these farmers are overran by rabbits at this point who are going to invade their gardens. They had rabbit roundups where they would go out and just kill as many rabbits as they could because that's how many there were. But again, this is a man-made disaster as well because had the farmers not killed off all of the coyotes, the coyotes would be eating the rabbits. That was their food source. So they eliminated the rabbit's predator and, and they were able to multiply very rapid rates. Livestock are going to suffocate, like the cattle that the farmers own, they're going to suffocate in these dust storms. Like I said, uh, there's reports that they would cut up open some of these cattle and, and their bellies would just be full of dirt. Uh, the government tries to help uh, by buying the livestock from these farmers. If they're good, they'll ship them back to, to the east where they can be um, uh, eaten. If they're bad, they'll put them in a pit and, and shoot them. But it, it's giving the farmers a little bit of money. I mean, they, they bought these cattle for dirt cheap from them, but it's giving them something. And now they're not having to take care of these the cattle. 1934, the government starts planting trees. Uh, it's called the Shelter Belt Project. And that's part of the New Deal program, which I'm going to touch on here just a, just a little bit. Uh, but their idea was, well, we'll just plant trees from north to south or south to north. And we'll create this barrier for these dust storms. That'll, that way it'll hold the ground down. It'll maybe act as a windbreak or, or whatnot. So you got to remember, this is the plains. So their idea was, we'll just plant trees on the plains and that'll help eliminate the Dust Bowl. Not only is it the Dust Bowl, but it's also the Great Depression and there is an extreme drought. So you've got three really hard situations here. Because of the Great Depression, people don't have jobs. They're, they're without um, a lot of things. They're having to make do on very, very little. Uh, they're losing things that they bought on credit. The banks are collapsing. So again, Great Depression, extreme drought, and the Dust Bowl. So three extremely hard situations altogether. Lots of dirt would come into the homes with these dust storms. Uh, women could not keep their homes clean, basically. They would, they would clean it one day, and then maybe a dust storm would come the next day, and it would be right back to where it was. So it was very frustrating for a lot of, of, of housewives uh, when it com comes to keeping the home clean, because they, you know, they were proud of that. They were proud of a clean home, and, and it made it really hard for them to do that. April 4th, 1935, that's Black Sunday, one of the worst dust storms on record in the United States. A lot of people die throughout these dust storms, dust pneumonia and things like that. 1935, 2.5 million people leave their homes and travel to California. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, migrations in, in American history as they try and find a better life in, in California. And again, unfortunately, when they get there, it's not so great for them. They're going to live in intense cities and whatnot. The shelter belt and soil conservation have success in reducing the amount of soil loss by the late 1930s. So we're kind of wrapping down the Dust Bowl uh, and, and the trees that they had planted did, did definitely help with that a little bit. In 1939, the drought finally ends. Uh, the government teaches uh, the farmers new farming practices, crop rotation, things like that. That way uh, they can take better care of the land and, and hopefully prevent this from happening again. Um, and then the Great Depression ends in 1939, and now we're fixing to get into World War II, which really kind of ended the Great Depression. Because remember, in times of war, the economy is fantastic because that demand is so high that it creates jobs and, and everything else. So 1930 to 1940, we call the Dirty 30s. So again, that's that's the Dust Bowl, um, kind of a, a shortened lesson. I wish we could meet in person. I could show you some, some cool videos and whatnot. Um, but if you get time, definitely kind of go out on your own and, and look, I would recommend if you have Amazon Prime, uh, Ken Burns has this really cool um, documentary on the Dust Bowl. Um, it's two episodes. I would watch that, especially the first episode. It gives you a lot. Um, also, there's a, a video. And again, I think it's on Amazon as well. You might could find some of these on YouTube. America, the story of us. And I believe it's episode nine. that talks about the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. Um, that gives you a lot of information um, on that as well. Um, but for now, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, you can see LMA's working hard on the on the weeds back there. And Luther's still chilling back there by the flowers on the pear tree. So we're going to get some of this weeding done, and I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit, and we'll talk briefly about the New Deal, and then I will give you your assignment for the week. I just watched the first part of this video, and I say uh and um a lot, so I got me a, a mason jar here. It'd be kind of like my cuss jar. Just every time I say uh or um, throw me a quarter in here. Maybe by the time we get to see each other again at school, I'll have enough quarters saved up to buy me some toilet paper on the black market. So that's the, the Dust Bowl lesson. Um, the dirty third, I just said it. See, there's a quarter. 
the uh, the dirty 30s, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, extreme drought. Uh, as far as the New Deal goes, the New Deal is a set of programs. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected president in 1932, and and he wanted to get the country out of the Great Depression, so. He developed some programs and he called them as New Deal programs. And basically it's just uh, making jobs for people, uh, you know, like the planting of the trees that provided a lot of a lot of jobs for people that otherwise wouldn't have a, a job. Uh, the Hoover Dam was built during this, this New Deal uh, era uh, and that provided a lot of jobs. So you have a lot of government programs. Basically the government's really getting involved in people's lives um, to try and pull the country out of the Great Depression. So all through the 1930s, the Dirty Thirties, Great Depression, Drought, Dust Bowl, uh, and ironically, they all kind of end at the same time around 1940. Uh, so let's look at your assignment for this week, and I'll let you get to it. See you guys next week. So your assignment for this week, I've got two things for you guys to do. Uh, the first one, I want you to search the web for some Dust Bowl pictures like the ones that we looked at a little earlier. And I want you to pick one that, that maybe really speaks to you, that you really like, or you really think just, you know, encompasses what the Dust Bowl was. So I want you to look at this photo, analyze it, and using a few sentences, answer at least this question. Why do you think this photo is important in showing what the Dust Bowl was like? So basically just find a picture you really like about the Dust Bowl and write about it in, you know, four or five sentences. But make sure you answer that question. Why do you think, you know, why did you pick this picture? Why do you think it's important in showing what the Dust Bowl was like? The second thing I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you are growing up in the dirty 30s and you're living on a farm in the Texas or Oklahoma Panhandle region, right there where that epicenter of the Dust Bowl was. I want you to create a journal entry, a minimum of a half a page, and I want you to describe what your life is like during the Dust Bowl. So this is first person point of view. Maybe talk about some of the things that you and your family might have gone through, how life is for you. Basically, just put yourself in that situation as if you were a child growing up in the dirty 30s. So those are your two assignments this week. When you finish those, just email them to me, uh, williams.dusty at howisd.net. You can just throw them in a Word document. It's fine. I do want to clarify one thing that I didn't mention a while ago. I just want to, again, clarify that the stock market crash, 1929, did not cause the Great Depression. That's a big misconception. They think, you know, the stock market crash and that's what caused the Great Depression. That's not what caused it. Most Americans didn't even own stock. You know, your, your rich ones did, but most of them didn't. What caused the Great Depression is just, you know, a whole bunch of things, actually. You, know, you had the banks crashing, you had people losing their jobs, the dust bowl, the drought. I mean, there were so many things that caused the Great Depression, um, but it was not because of the stock market crash. So just to clarify, it, it played a part, yes, but we didn't have the Great Depression because of the stock market crash. We had the Great Depression because of a lot of different things that were going on in the United States. So there's your two assignments. Get them to me by Friday or so, and we'll call it good. Hope you guys have a good week. It's 6.45 a.m., and I'm at Walmart. Let me clarify. I'm at Walmart for the first time since February, since all this mess started. And really, this will be the first time that I've gone in Walmart in about a year to get groceries. Normally, they bring it out to me, but all those crazy people ruin that luxury. So it's 6.45 in the morning, and they open at 7, and the parking lot is packed, and there's people waiting outside. So I've got my Clorox wipes. I probably better hide them under the seat. I've got my coffee, and i got my inhaler. <laughs>